Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling fans, what is going on with you? It's BQ, it's the Impact Lounge. Please subscribe because if you don't subscribe, it is punishable by death. Discussion question time for you guys today. Something I thought about reading something on a Pro Wrestling Insider today where they talked about how much better the company was run under Dixie Carter. I want to know if that's something you think to be true as well. Dixie Carter, Anthem Sports Entertainment, who is running the company better? Now, there's there's certain factors you got to take into consideration. Dixie Carter was paying wrestlers more than they were able to bring in. Hence why James they were not able to re-sign James Storm. Dixie Carter appeared to get along with everybody fairly well, but there's always a lot of backlash towards Dixie Carter when wrestlers left the company about how poorly it was mismanaged. We haven't heard that so much yet outside of like the Hardys or something regarding Ed Nordholm, but we do know there is some mismanagement going on there too. One thing that TNA and Impact has always been guilty of, and it's not even really a bad thing, they just wanted to compete. And they have never been afraid to just throw shit at the wall to see if it sticks. But the problem with that is that there's not a lot of continuity. And things change from time to time. And there's reboots. And it becomes very difficult to follow. Especially from taping to taping. Now this time last year, I thought the product was... Not, no, not this time last year. This time last year it kind of sucked. But... All of 2016, for the most part, was really, really good programming. It was a lot of very stale programming, too. But I go back to the build for Slammiversary and last year's Bound for Glory build. You know, really good job. But under Dixie Carter, the company was going belly up. It was going out of business. It was going under. I always kind of liked Dixie Carter. I never minded her as a on-screen character. I wouldn't mind if they brought her out now. I really wouldn't. She's still an owner. And then, you know, Anthem comes along. Um, they do the rebranding, which I felt was very necessary. I know a lot of people think, oh, no, it should be TNA. I don't personally. I was good with the Impact rebranding. I felt it was something that needed to happen. You know, new logo, new look. And I knew when, when Anthem came aboard that there was going to be a transfer of talent. You know, I knew that a lot of wrestlers were going to were gonna come and go because that's what happens anytime there's new management. doesn't matter if you work at Walmart. When a new big, big dog comes in, changes will be made. Did I like last year's roster a little better? I think so. But that doesn't mean I, I don't like this, this roster right now. I think what they're doing with the knockouts... Is night and day from last year. Last year, you know, we had, um, and they're popular, you know, Rebel, Marty Bell. Well, Rebel's a much better wrestler now, but Rebel, Marty Bell. There's a lot of non wrestlers with uh, Maria and uh, Raquel who, who kind of wrestled. Um, you, you know what I mean? I think the knockouts division's in a better place. So I think Ed has brought good people aboard, but I think there's been a lot of really questionable decisions that he's done as well. I think he's been a little more transparent than Dixie Carter, which I like, especially when, you know, the short time Jeff Jarrett was around. They're a little more transparent, where Dixie Carter used to always deflect. You know, and she, I mean, I remember famously, she was on uh, Stone Cold's podcast, and she had, she had tried to put over how Destination America was um, taking, a, <laughs> taking a step back, backward in order to take a step forward as opposed to being on Spike TV. Like she tried to flip that into a positive when everyone knew that was, you know, not a positive. <laughs> and um, there's, the, you know, there's probably more behind the scenes mismanagement that we weren't really aware of. Now it seems like, I feel like now the dirt sheets are out to get them even, even more than ever right now. That's my personal opinion, but I don't want to ramble too long here. I kind of want to know though, what you guys think if you just enjoy the, the product under Dixie Carter better than you do under Anthem. I just think there's pros and cons, positives and negatives either way. If Dixie Carter was still around, we probably wouldn't have a company right now. 
I was a supporter of Billy Corgan taking over personally. But I don't have a whole lot of complaints about the current management because they've they've done new things. They've you know I always criticize the marketing under Dixie Carter, which was horrendous, and it's still not good. But it's it's taken a lot of steps forward. They have utilized um, digital media to its full, fullest extent. You know, like you can make money off YouTube if you have a engaging channel. And based what I bring in for my channel, I have to assume that just in comparison, Impact is actually bringing in quite a bit monthly. So that was a good thing that happened when Ed came and, and Jarrett, where they took digital media and went, took it to the next level, was doing some original programming. You know, the network is under Anthem, you know, so there's a lot of things under the Anthem umbrella, which I think are really, really good, but there's a perception of that it's still being mismanaged because month to month things are changing so drastically. So I want to know what you guys think, Anthem or Dixie Carter.